Greetings everyone and thank you for coming to another uh, YouTube video. On this video we are going to see, it's the continuation of the first video where we install uh, Proxmox um, uh, virtualization and now um, on this video I'm going to show you a very very simple step-by-step um, -step on how to add uh, the, an, an NFS store um, and then as well we are, I'm going to show you a quick um, quick comment regarding the the ISOs uh, so um, where, where can you, how can you store your uh, your your ISO files um, to uh, to of course present it to the VM that you're creating and finally we are going to uh, run step by step how to create a virtual machine all of these steps are very very simple um, probably you might have figured figure them out by yourself already or looking for documentation, but I wanted to show you and maybe make some special comments on some special settings. Um, so hopefully it's useful, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be very short. But remember, we are going to touch multiple things um, on this on this video. So without any further ado, let's jump into the video and um, into the lab, and then let's uh, let's let, let's roll it up. Okay, so now that we're here in our cluster, let's go in under uh, data center storage. We can click in add NFS in this case. Uh, the ID is going to be VMs because I'm just going to uh, select the VMs uh, NFS that I have. You put the server. One thing that I love is that it uh, already, you know, shows you what you can connect to. You don't need to specify. So that is very, very nice. The content, um, you can select multiples. It's a bit confusing all the time, right? Because it, it doesn't look like it's multiple selection, but it is. So let's select this image, container, and container template, not container template. So yes, I'm going to store here um, uh, VMs and containers, nothing else. And let's see in advance, pre-allocation and interface version, all automatic, that's fine. Click add, and that's it. That is how you add your NFS uh, into uh, into a Proxmos cluster. Very simple, right? Um, I told you it will be it will be very short. But now that we have this, uh, let me show you the ISOs. Let's focus now on the ISOs, because for the ISOs you need to select, of course, uh, same as I've done. You put the IP, uh, you you present the select the export and the content ISO M uh, image, and then when you select that, it 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 auto creates a folder in the in the path called template and inside template um, ISOs ISO the template ISO that is where you need to put all of your files so it's a bit annoying that if you have the ISOs already you know on on the root path you need to move them here but that's that's the bigger problem and that's it right so um, just bear it in mind once you select uh, um, Data storage on uh, NFS, and you put ISOs, is going to create a template ISO folder. And please move the ISOs there inside. Now, let's go and create a virtual machine. Our first virtual machine is going to be a Linux in my case, uh, AI Flowwise. Go to the next page. Now, here on the ISO, yeah, perfect. I just have one. And then you can see the two images that they were under that path. I cannot see the ones that they were in, on, on the root. Let's select next. Here, important, graphic card. Um, if you will have Linux, it will be better if you put a spice, but because it's just a Linux, right? So I'm just going to put uh, default, SCSI controller, uh, virt IO. Let's install the, Q, uh, the QMO agent, which is sort of the VMware tools. Here, I'm going to select um, Q35. With Q35, you can do Pass through is a bit more modern. The the, the machine type it, it's kind of the the latest and greatest. I, I will probably tell you to use always Q35 for most of the modern workloads that you are going to run. But if you're not doing pass through or any new things, you can always keep default. I'll select Q35 much better. And same same as here, right? If you have a specific need, like in Windows VMs to have a UFI, you can do it over here. But then in this case, I'm just going to select um, a normal BIOS. TPM, exactly the same. You can put TPM in the case that you are doing some Windows um, advanced things. But on this case, for my Linux, I do not need um, TPM either. I'm going to create another video for, for the Windows uh, anyways. Okay, what else can we uh, do right here? Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. The QMO agent, which is the, the VMware tools sort of because we need to install them later um, uh, or enable them later on the um, 
on the agent anyways on the Linux. But well, that is very important to do later on when you want to do uh, backup snapshots and so on to have the, the QMO agent. Now here, uh, for the disks, let me see. You can select VMware or RAW, but I will just use QMU. It's much, much more efficient. This size, 100 gigs. Uh, SCSI, yes. Yeah, you can always select some something different, but SCSI for me, it's perfect. Um, I will not change it. If you're doing something, maybe some legacy, you can always select uh, IDE, but that's probably that's probably too, too, too legacy, to be honest. Um, and then two options that you should do here if you want the best out of the best results for your virtual machine, right? It is about cache and about uh, the discard. The discard is like the trim when uh, you need to, you know, retrieve space. Uh, so the discard is always a nice option in the case that you know your uh, storage can get out of space or and so on. If you auto if you provision, um, you know, a lot of them. If you provision a, a lot of VMs and uh, in thin, blah, 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 later on the discard is going to trim and try to save a space that is not consumed, is not used. So yeah, this is much better. Um, so discard, cache, caching right back to get the best, uh, the best performance possible. And then here now CPU, nothing complex, uh, uh, one socket for course for the type. You can emulate anything as you can see here. But to me, my preference really is just to go and select host, right? So I don't need to do any emulation whatsoever. I'm just going to be, you know, this VM is going to have the CPU type that the host has and nothing nothing out of the ordinary, right? I'm not emulating uh, Intel or anything while I have AMD or something like that, right? Um, I just want to have uh, what the host has, memory, um, very simple. And then finally on the network, I don't have anything advanced for network just yet. So uh, virt IO is perfect. Um, and I go next over here. This is the summary. Then I click finish, start the VM after creation. And then I go here into my new VM and I go into the console. Very nice, very intuitive. I really like the console embedded here, uh, not on another tab or no weird things that I need to install. This is perfect. I love it. Perfect size as well, resized properly and so on. So this is a very nice uh, interface, at least for me, coming you know from the things. Let me create an attack here called AI, because this is going to be an AI machine, a uh, virtual machine. Coming from VMware that you need to open to another tab, another browser, or you need a console and so on. Look, I just prefer this uh, on a tab and that's it, much simpler. Continue with this updating here. This is just the normal Ubuntu install, so I'm not going to bother you much, but let's, I'll show you how you can do the um, edit IP4 here. So we will do manual and then let's put the subnet. 192.168.10, address the 106, and then the gateway 11. Finally, my name servers, uh, okay, the six and the seven, and Google, just in case my VMs are, are, are off, and then my domain, jorgedacruz.es. Perfect. Um, okay, what's next? No proxy, uh, no mirror, use the entire disk, it's perfectly fine, but always please 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 go here and <laughs> you know um use the maximum space because ubuntu by default it just doesn't take all the uh disk uh, i always prefer xfs much more so let's click here save and then finally let's go here and done then continue my name okay flow Flawise.jorgedelacruz.es, uh, username, username, yeah, opera as well. And then I will put here my password um, two times. And I think that is okay. Yeah, I don't know. Open SSH, yes, always. I don't want to uh, install any of these extra packages. And then finally, I'm going to accelerate this process, right? Because you know um, what is going to happen, right? It's going to boot, uh, it's going to install everything and everything that is needed. It downloads some packages from the internet and so on and so forth. So let's let's accelerate this part. So we do, we don't get stuck while this installs. Um, and I think 
the next probably the next good option here for in Proxmox it will be created. Uh, creating a Linux and a Windows template so I can use them in the future. I, and I do not need to, you know, go through all of this manually uh, over and over. Let's click a reboot now. Uh, here, this took around good seven, eight minutes. Uh, probably just downloading all the packages. Okay. And then now it's booting up the VM. You can see the Proxmox CIA uh, BIOS there. Okay, perfect. Yeah, all of the uh, demons there and the services. Okay, processes perfect. All good. Now we're going. To, what we're going to do together is we are uh, going to first. This is the first login, right? Again, I'm not using a template, so we are going to um, run the traditional, you know, apt get update and upgrade just for the for the packages. Okay, let's go here and run the traditional uh, apt get update and upgrade. Even with a template, I always do it, you know, just in case that since the template until I deploy there's new packages or some critical vulner vulnerabilities. But let's run it right now and I will accelerate it as well so we don't need to wait here for, for long. Okay, perfect. Lots and lots of packages here. So at the end, it's really worth it to give it um, to give it an, an update. Now, let's go and install now the uh, the QMU agent, right? So again, sort of the sort of the VMware tools that uh, from VMware. This is very important. It's going to make your VM much more resilient when you do uh when you want to do snapshots when you want to do backups and so on so apt get install qemu not the that you it's an it's not qemu and then as simple as minus guest minus agent okay um small package okay perfect yeah let's select okay here to restart wherever it needs to be restarted and um, see if I can click okay here with the tab. What's happening? Okay. And now uh, two things we need to do. First is a store, start the, the 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 service, and the other one is uh, enable it for uh, into the startup. So systemctl start qmu minus guest minus agent. That's okay. That's running. And systemctl um, enable. QMO minus guest minus agent. Sometimes you don't need this. I think like this uh, maybe give you an error. But anyways, let's do a reboot and let's give it a let's give it a quick try um, to see if this is if this is up if this is running right. Um, have not found any other way to see like the agent is up and running and listening uh, and well connecting. So I'll show you. The way that uh, that I found, uh, you know, on the official documentation ab about this, um, maybe there is a visual way, but I, I don't know it. So, anyways, it's just I go to my host, and inside the the host, I just go here uh, into QM agent hundred. Remember, that's the ID uh, of the VM, the, that VM that I have over over there, and I just did ping. I didn't get any error, so that is that all is working fine. It's very confusing, right? No errors, uh, no response could at least say, uh, okay. But anyways, um, well, I started the, the process, but I think it was auto started anyways. You see those two pinks call over there? Uh, well, it was at the same at the same second even, but you see that I received a ping uh, right there. So that guest ping is from the host doing a guest ping directly. Um, so. Let's try it again. QM agent 100, which is the ID ping. No error. That's good. And what's happening on the agent itself? Okay. I, I just get the, um, I just got that information. I just got that uh, the ping received successfully. So that is all perfect. And that is all nice and working. And that's 
And that's everything. I mean, there is nothing else to say. Uh, hopefully the video was useful for you. Uh, hopefully the step-by-step -step with the little comments uh, here and there, it has been uh, useful. If that's so, leave a comment here, maybe subscribe if you're not subscribed, and uh, maybe let me know what else do you want uh, you want to see. I think for the next videos, I'm going to focus more into the, uh, let's say into the cluster, uh, into the cluster details, so for example, or host details. So I really, really want to deep dive more into the storage, not just the NFS that I showed you today, but more into a uh, more complex sort of a storage. Um, and as well, I wanted to have a dedicated video regarding networking, right? Because uh, it has been has been a few questions, and even for myself, uh, coming from from VMware, um, I still have questions or doubts. So I'm going to resolve all of them, and I'm going to show you uh, what I've what I've learned um, during uh, during the process. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and see you in another video. Bye.